This thing here is my little indoor rail anvil. I made this some time ago on the shaper. Now this is a piece of special rail, it's not the width of the typical train rail. It's a bit wider because it supported a big, and I say a very big crane. And the top surface is of course hard. And because I cut this surface in the shape with high speed steel, the surface finish is not really fantastic. So I would like to redo it, but using inserts. If I use an insert like this in the shaper, it will not survive. But now that I have the milling machine, all I have to do is use my fly cutter, give it a fly and it will be perfect. The problem with this fly cutter is that the insert is in the wrong angle. To let take very light cuts it works perfectly fine, but it makes a terrible burr while cutting. So I would like to make a new one. First I thought make a new one out of this thing and then put the insert in an other angle in here, but it will be too small. I can also use this piece of square, this is 20 mm square, and fit my little insert here somewhere, of course cut a piece off and then make a shaft out of this piece of rust. It should be nice of course if I could make it in one piece so that it looks a bit like this. But this thread is a 2 mm pitch thread and I can't cut it on my lathe. So in two parts it will be. My idea is to make something like this. Let's take the center lines here. More or less, my drawing still sucks, okay? Top view, this will be shaft, if we look at it like this. My 20 mm square will be here somewhere. I think more or less 80 mm will do the trick. If I want to install my Insert it. Oh, that's stupid. It should come over here in the center. Oh, angle is not right on the center line because of the thickness of my insert. It leaves me here a thickness wall thickness of six millimeters. I think. That's not enough. So the plan is to make a pocket for my insert in an angle starting from the center and put my insert over here. So first over the lathe and make something useful out of this piece of rust. As you can see I already started a bit without you. But I can't have a good finish on this part. I don't know what's happening. I can't push the machine hard enough to use carbide inserts. So now I switch to, to high speed steel. And when I look here, it looks promising. If I got this right, normally, my collet should fit on here. Yes. It's a little bit snug. Yes, that's better. 
I flip the part around in the lathe and I'm gonna cut it off so I have a nice little length to bolt this part on. So if shit happens you will see from very close. <coughs> I think it worked this time. And now that I finally have the right gears to be able to cut threads on the lathe, let's do just that. <laughs> Since my operations and my cancer, I have a little bit air bubbles in my system and I'm doing stupid things and I can't figure out what. I see something is wrong but I can't figure it out. For example, when I was cutting the threads on this little part, according to my dial, I was at full depth, but the nut didn't fit. It's only this morning that I figured out what was wrong. When I dial in one, I reduce the diameter of one, which means the depth of cut is only a half. So that's smart, but now it fits and I left it a little bit oversized so it's, it's a fit but a tight fit and I hope now that when I put it in here when finished it will be still a tight fit, but I suppose future will tell. That being said, let's have some quality time at the milling machine squaring up this little block here. Copper wire trick, always good. My little block is squared up. I didn't touch these two surfaces I will do at the end. And now it's time to take some very important decisions. If this for example is the surface I'm cutting and my little insert here that I have in bigger model just imagine this it doesn't exist, okay? I have the best surface finish when I have 2-3 degrees free angle here. But here, on the cutting side, it will make a terrible burr. The ideal should be to install it this way, so the burr will curl on the not yet cut surface and break off, but the surface finish will be less. I don't know. Right. B. 
because on this fly cutter the little insert is installed this way making terrible burrs and I'm making a new one to experiment a bit I will install it like this 30 degrees 30 degrees I will install my part like this in the vise with this line in line with the jaw and then cut out this little pocket but first I will cut in line with the machine but after that I need an angle of 60 degrees so I'm gonna take this vise off and install the little blue one with swivel base Uh -huh. doesn't fit I have to take off these two little blocks here right vise installed part in place 3 millimeter little end mill in here because this machine doesn't have a depth stop for the quill I installed it at maximum maximum depth, maximum stroke and that will be the depth of the pocket my idea is to drill down, move a millimeter, drill down, move a millimeter I suppose there's an official name for this uh, operation but I don't know right, let's do this change of plans as you could hear when the quill is completely down it makes terrible but terrible noises and I feel the vibrations in the hand wheel The little pocket starts to look like something. That seems to work. And the little end mill survived. Now, this little end mill was a viewer gift, so to handle with care, of course. Right, let's drill the hole and then adapt this little bolt here to fix the whole thing together. And it is a snug fit. I will assemble it in the chuck of the lathe. I don't think it will need any Loctite. <laughs> Let's take a spanner. Okay. Part is wiggling. Now what? 
I think I'm gonna take out this aluminium protection seams things. Let's try it this way. When we were young, I suppose we did lots of things without protection, so this will be okay too. Much better. That could work. This little thingy now fits the way it should fit. Nice little round here. Let's take off the burrs a bit. Right, I will clean it up a little bit more when I take it out. But I think the moment has come to make the bolt. It's just a stupid little drill chuck, but the thing works great. Unbelievable. Where's my insert? That will work. Assembly time. Oh. Oh. If you think it looks a bit bizarre, you're absolutely right. But if you're a little bit familiar with this channel, you know that this may be not the first time I make bizarre looking things. Let's give the thing a spin in the milling machine. I installed here a piece of scrap metal, whatever thing, in the vise. This is mild steel. Just for the first run, let's give it a try. And if it works, I can give it a go on harder steel, on the rail and wheel. Two tenths of a millimeter. I think it will clean it up completely, but we'll see. I think that's a really nice result. I can see the rainbow colors in the light. Right, now that this looks good, let's install the rail and wheel. Lucky I am, the four holes in this bottom plate just matches these slots of the milling machine. So, four T-nuts, four bolts and the thing is held in place, I hope, firmly. We'll see. Okay, machine set at 475 RPM. Depth of cut 2 tenths of a millimeter. Here goes nothing. I think it works great. The line we see here, I can see it, but 
I can hardly feel it. This part here, the tool just touched but without cutting, so it scored a bit the surface finish, but all in all, I'm happy with the results. Let's conclude with a conclusion, for example. Making a fly cutter is a really good idea. Because all over YouTube and also here in my workshop of course, you see pop up these things in all kinds of different shapes and flavors and they all work. And maybe the most important reason is for the price of one end mill carbide end mill I can buy two of these boxes of triangular inserts 20 inserts which means 60 cutting edges here I can screw up once that's it game over here, after a screw up, I have 59 other chances to do it right.